This video is a continuation of the AP Introduction to Measurement. In this video, we're going to talk about order of magnitude and how to perform calculations using order of magnitude. Order of magnitude is likely a new topic for all of you. Um, let's start out with what it is. You may want to jot this down. Order of magnitude, simply stated, is the power of 10 that a number is closest to. When we perform an order of magnitude calculation, we perform the calculation using only um, powers of 10, and this is done for estimation purposes. So order of magnitude is the power of 10 a number is closest to. An order of magnitude calculation is an estimation, the uh, estimated calculation that is performed using only powers of 10. The benefit of this, of course, is that you don't need a calculator to do it. Um, you just need to employ some kind of previous knowledge and some common sense. I know. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that too. Okay. First, let's practice uh, order of magnitude just by itself before we do calculations. I'm going to select my jersey number for baseball, which is 15. So if we said, asked, what is 15's order of magnitude? What you're being asked is the power of 10 that 15 is closest to. This is a pretty easy uh, example to start off with. So what you do is you decide, okay, 15 is between 10 to the 1, which of course is 10, and 10 to the 2, 100. 15 lies between 10 and 100, which by powers of 10 is 10 to the 1 and 10 to the 2. Well, clearly, which one is 15 closer to. 15 is closer to 10 to the first, so 15's order of magnitude is 10 to the first, or you can just say its order of magnitude is 1, just say, stating its exponent. So 15's order of magnitude is 10 to the first, or 1. A little trickier when we do um, order of magnitude with decimals. So let's do 0.15. Between what powers of 10 does 0.15 lie? Well, on the low side, 10 to the negative 1 is a power of 10 smaller than that number, 0.1. And 10 to the 0 is the power of 10 larger than that number, 1. Check. Does 0.15 lie between 0.1 and 1. And indeed it does. Once you've established that you've selected the correct pair of powers of 10, 10 the number lies between, the rest is pretty easy. Which is, which is it closer to? Is 0.15 closer to 10 to the negative 1 or 10 to the 0? And clearly it's closer to 10 to the negative 1 than it is 10 to the 0. So 0.15's order of magnitude is 10 to the negative 1, or you could just say negative 1. Okay? All right, let's do another example. What about 500? All right? What, between what two powers of 10 does 500 lie? Well, the power 10 smaller than 500 is 10 to the 2, or 100. And the power of 10 larger than 500 is 10 to the 3, or 1,000. 500 lies between 100 and 1,000, which is 10 to the 2nd and 10 to the 3rd. Well, which one is it closer to? This is one that students tend to stumble on at first because you're used to 500 being halfway and therefore rounding up to the next higher number. Is that true in this case? Is 500 halfway between 100 and 1,000? Well, let's take a closer look. The difference between 100 and 500 is 400. The difference between 500 and 1,000 is 500. So when estimating using power uh, order of magnitude, 5 is not the halfway cutoff point between digits. We can clearly see that 500 is closer to 10 to the second than it is 10 to the third. 
So 500's order of magnitude would be 10 to the second or just 2. Now, then what is the halfway cutoff point at which we would say, okay, this number lies halfway in between the two powers of 10, and therefore we would round up. In this particular case, that number would be 550, because you would be 450 away from 100, 450 away from 1,000, and if that happened, you would select 10 to the third. You would round up to the next highest power of 10. So, essentially, what you need to know here is that 5.5 and any power of 10 attached to that is the halfway cutoff point at which you would round up to the next highest power of 10. Okay, enough with practice on uh, order of magnitude. Now we're going to do an order of magnitude calculation for a sample here. I'm so I've selected uh, page 21, number 28, um, as your sample problem for this. So open up your textbook if you need to pause the video to get your textbook out and open it up. Page 21, number 28. The problem reads. A hamburger chain advertises that it has sold more than 50 billion hamburgers. Estimate how many pounds of hamburger meat must have been used by the chain and how many head of cattle were required to furnish the meat. All right. So the first thing that we need to do in this problem is take our piece of given information, which is 50 billion hamburgers and find that number's order of magnitude. Order of magnitude calculations are only done using powers of 10. So we will not be using the number 50 billion in our calculation. 50 billion, which would be 50 times 10 to the 9th, is 5 times 10 to the 10th. That would be 50 billion written in um, scientific notation. Well, 50 times 10 to the, uh, I'm sorry, 5 times 10 to the 10th lies between 10 to the 10th and 10 to the 11th. 5 is less than the halfway point, so 10 to the 10th is 50 billions order of magnitude. We're now going to use that 10 to the 10 hamburgers to do a dimensional analysis calculation to find out how many pounds of meat had to be furnished to, supply, to make those hamburgers. Well, where would hamburgers have to go in our in our fraction to cancel would have to go in the denominator. Therefore, pounds would go in the numerator. Well, and now you're left to estimate, okay, how many pounds is in one hamburger? Well, most of, most of us would say, oh, it's a quarter pound, you know, the quarter pounder. But we wouldn't put 0.25 pounds in the numerator. We put 0.25s order of magnitude. So we need to determine the order of magnitude for 0 0.25. 0 0.25 lies between 10 to the negative 1, which if you're struggling with this, I would encourage you to put its decimal value beneath it, and 10 to the 0. Double check that. Does 0 0.25 lie between 0 0.1 and 1? The answer is yes. 0.25 is less than the halfway cutoff point, which would be 0.55. So you select the lower power of 10. So 0.25's order of magnitude is 10 to the negative 1. We use that to do the calculation. Hamburgers cancels. And now you plainly see why we use this, why we would use this method, because you can easily do this calculation with no calculator. Everybody should be able to multiply and divide powers of 10 without having to use a calculator. 
We're multiplying here, so we add the exponents. We get 10 to the 9 pounds. So we would estimate 10 to the 9 pounds were used to make those hamburgers. Okay. Now, our last step here is how many cattle, how many heads of cattle were used to furnish the meat. So we're, we now have to convert 10 to the 9 pounds to cattle or cows. So pounds would go in the denominator to, in order to cancel pounds. And one member of a head of cattle would be a cow. One cow is how many would be able to furnish how many pounds. The nice part about this is there would be some of you which who would have no idea. But if you implore some common sense and keep in mind you're only doing this using powers of 10, here's this cow in front of you. Picture the cow on the right here. Picture it standing in front of you, very large animal. And you say to yourself, okay, would this cow supply 100 pounds? Well, that seems kind of low. Would this cow supply a thousand pounds? Well, that's possible. A cow is about a ton or so, which is 2,000 pounds. So if we get just the meat off the cow, maybe that would be a thousand pounds. But then you say, okay, would the cow supply 10,000 pounds? See, all you're doing is increasing by powers of 10 here. And what you can clearly see is that even if the cow supplied 550 pounds, that would be what? 10 to the third, because you'd round up. Or if you said, no, I think it would supply 5,500 pounds, or less than 5,500 pounds, you're still rounding down to a power of 10, that's 10 to the third. So even if the cow's meat furnished was between 550 and 5,449 pounds, you're safe in that ballpark of 10 to the third. So 10 to the third makes common sense. We go over here and substitute 10 to the third. Pounds cancels. We're dividing, so we're subtracting powers of 10 exponents. So 10 to the 6 cows, 10 to the 6 head of cattle were used to supply this meat. These types of questions are nicknamed Fermi questions. F-E-R-M-I. And we'll do some more practice with them in class soon. So this is your introduction to order of magnitude. Um, all of you are going to be also taking the New York State Regents exam at the end of the year. And both the AP exam and the New York State Regents physics exam have one order of magnitude question on the exam every year, at least one. So this will end our discussion on order of magnitude, and we look forward to, I look forward to uh, doing some more Fermi questions with you in class.